Please subscribe to this channel and we'll keep the comedy clips flowing. And now... I'm going to set the scene for you, okay? 16th of February 2014, 9am, Krakow, Poland. Two sisters, one coach, 15 sober people, and a tour guide. <laughs> Worst hangover ever? You have no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think that there is kind of one main thing that happens when you wake up the next morning that you know you're going to be fucked with a hangover. And that is that you wake up and you feel grand. You feel better than grand. You feel fucking brilliant. You have a laugh, have a sip of water, hop out of bed, bit of pizza in your knickers, all good. Why? Because you're still pissed. And this tomfoolery of the brain gets me every time. But yeah, but now, honestly, this, this was definitely the worst hangover of the lot. As I said, I was in Poland with my sister, had a hectic night the night before, lots of vodka, laughing, pissing, shouting a lot. Anyway, we, we made it back, we made it back. And, and, and way back in the back of our drunken minds was, of course, the 9 a.m. coach trip that we were going to take. Now, this wasn't any type of tour we were taking, and I'm not proud to say that this was the day we decided to go to Auschwitz. <laughs> Over. Threw on the clothes, fucked on the makeup. I ended up looking like some sort of Holocaust interested drag queen. I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Anyway, we were on our way, found the coach, got on, 9 a.m., everything was grand. So I've got to say it was about 10, 10, 15 minutes into the journey, and the mandatory panting started. So you, you know that feeling when you're like, like you actually can't breathe. <laughs> and you're taking the big gulps and your tongue kind of feels like the Velcro on a retarded child's shoe. And it's just not good. It's not good. And um, to my surprise, um, a, a video came on, on the telly at the, big, the top of the bus. And it wasn't your normal hangover TV, no. This was an educational documentary about what happened in the concentration camps. So you're not going to be surprised uh, in the fact that with the commentary of the young boys being castrated, I felt like I needed to get sick. <laughs> now, I wasn't prepared, lads, I'm not going to lie. And what I did get sick in was, of course, the Ryanair plastic bag that just days before held my liquids. Um, yeah, I can confirm that it does hold a lot more than <laughs> And the, while I was getting sick and all that, the feeling kind of started passing on to my sister, who was next to me. Now they say a problem shared is a problem shared. But in this case, it wasn't right because we were both fucked. So much so that she actually left me and just moved to the seat in front. Yeah. So I didn't hold it against her because I saw a bin and I was like, you know what? That's, that's my trick. So I just pulled it up. Pulled out the big sack, and when I say I got sick, lads, I fucking went to town. <laughs> Everything went in that bag. Did a little nice knot, fucked it back in the bin, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna have to just put myself to sleep here. So as I was closing my eyes, I was thinking, geez, my sister's coping actually quite well, and, and I fell asleep, had one of those kind of weird, nappy, comatose, hungover sleeps. And anyway, I, I kind of awoke a little while later to see my sister's arm just flying in the air like a white surrendering flag asking for the attention of the tour guide and as the tour guide came over with just moments of her saying we will be at the camp in a few minutes a fountain of cherry vodka and vomit spewed to the floor and then of course streamed backwards around my feet and I knew that in that moment not only did the tour guide the coach driver, the 15 sober people, pretty much anyone affected by the Holocaust, not only them, but our mother would never love us again. <laughs> so that, that really was the worst hangover ever. And, and that, it's just ridiculous that I can tell that story and say that I still drink. <laughs> Unusual, but my English friends are just like, how? How can you 
you get back on the drink, you know, after a fucking hangover like that? And I can only describe it and relate it to one thing, and that's pregnancy and childbirth. Okay, so a woman gets pregnant and she's the nine months of the pain and the torture and then it's the big day, the labour and it's fucking painful and she's feeling sick and she's crying and then it's just going on and on and she feels like she wants to die and then she has the baby and then the few days kind of pass and she's looking at it and smiling and cooing and they're all laughing and, and telling stories about it and she looks up at her husband and she says, well we have another one. <laughs> about it and I'm telling stories and we're all having great crack and I look at my friends and I look over at the pub and I look at my friends and I say, will we have another one? <laughs> There is, we knew it already, didn't we? There is no nation of storytellers like the Irish. Give her a shake. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you lovely person. Please be sure to subscribe to this We Are Funny Project channel. It really helps us to keep bringing you comedy clips, stand-up tips, and a whole load more. Thanks in advance.